Hey, what's up YouTube? So today we finally played on like two full days on Aura Stacker and so far it's been a blast. The damage has been really, really good. I was also able to try out some inscribed ultimatums and some of them are basically free money if you can buy them at a cheap enough price. So if you set up some live search, say a double exalt one, you buy it for 0.7 exalt, then you just pretty much get 0.3 exalt and then scribed ultimatum literally takes like absolutely no time to finish some of the attack ones or defend the ritual take like 30 seconds to finish and it's probably the fastest 30 chaos you could ever make or more so basically this character's damage is more than enough at the moment and we've slowly been increasing the survivability of the character you can see now that the es is at 4423 which is very solid once we get to the 5k mark, the character will feel a lot more unkillable than it does now. And you can see we still have 90% all res, 45% physical damage reduction, and 48% evasion. Now we were able to do all the end game content now with this character. We did the feared invitation, we did the elder invitation, we did the shaper invitation, and we did some breach invitation along with the elder fight able to drop a watcher's eye too so that was pretty cool oh we also did cortex too and got a bottle of faith now throughout this video i'm going to go over the gear again to show you what changes i've made talk about the importance of a watcher's eye and why we need to set up a live search to find immunity to freeze on it and then we're going to go into the money making methods that we're doing and why acing exalt is absolutely crucial late game when we craft our rares and how this can allow us to get like a plus two aura on our helm, uh, projectile speed and projectile damage on our necklace, and almost a 50-50 chance at getting move speed on any pair of rare boots that we choose to make. So anyhow, let's get straight into the gear overview. So most of my gear like stayed relatively the same. So we have the nebulous, and here is still the exact same nebulous. Maybe I'll make try to look up a uh, double damage with spells nebulous but so far this has served its purpose well since it's very well rolled i also got 26 quality while farming betrayal and the quality helps a lot because we can get a weapon enchantment from harvest which converts the quality to elemental damage which is very useful now the crown we didn't do anything to it it's still exactly the same we did get a white socket with verici while farming betrayal which should help out a lot if I ever try to do any serious bossing where stakes actually matter, I could put the leap slam in the white socket and switch it out with flame dash. Since flame dash is so much better for bossing. Now the necklace here is still the same, except we've decided to put tempering catalyst on it to increase the defense modifier, which increases the percent maximum energy shield. Now I was told in chat that the fertile catalyst will no longer affect the reduced reservation of skills since some GGG employee confirmed that that was just how they intended it to be since it no longer has a life or mana tag. So that kind of sucks, but we were able to take this to our advantage because we can put on the defense catalyst or we can do the crit catalyst for more damage. Or you can even do the attribute catalyst to get more attributes since we're kind of struggling on stats at the moment. Now the Prism Guardian, we, are, we still have the same. We've been looking for a Grace Prism Guardian, but that just hasn't happened. Uh, you can see here how expensive it is. This guy actually bought it probably at 14 exalts and then repriced it to 40 exalts, which is just absurd. I would not pay 40 exalts for that. However, the Prism Guardian is now probably a tier one unique according to many people before it was tier two. So this will make it a lot harder for people to corrupt it because the more expensive an item is, the harder it will be to corrupt. And now we have our Call of the Brotherhoods. I still have the same Hatred one. And then I also picked up a Fire Damage to Spells and Attacks. Now this one's pretty important because it frees up our Abyss Jewel Socket to have a free mod and not have to worry about getting Fire Damage to Spells. So getting a reduced reservation of skills with ES without having to worry about Fire Damage to Spells is really, really nice. So I'll probably be able to get a better one of, of Abyss Jewels now that I have this ring. Because usually in order to get fire damage to spells, and we needed to proc our Cinder Swallow, right? So in order to get the fire damage to spells, it has to either be on our Nebulous, our Ring Corruption, or an Abyss Jewel. And those are pretty much the only ways of doing it. Unless you play EK and you run Herald of Ash. 
the gloves we were able to trade our plus two aura plus one frenzy for this plus two plus two and right now it's not really being used that well because it has it with purities in it and discipline so you would need a 21 vol discipline to take advantage of this but a 21 vol discipline turns out to be extremely expensive like 10 exalts so i'm right now i'm using just a regular a level 20 vol discipline now later on when I get another gem slot opened up, I can use it in power, smite, and discipline, and any other aura here. And that will be the next upgrade. Now that will probably require getting a little more RMR somewhere. And it will require uh, also getting another gem slot. And gem slots are pretty hard to come by, so that's why the shield is worth so much and the ring is worth so much. Ideally, the amulet would have a aura but at this time it's pretty hard to craft an amulet with crit multi and really good stats and a belt i've also started using this belt for bossing it turns out that chaos resist is very important and i just got tired of dying so i'm just using this stopgap belt it has some strength on it it has some es and it has, most importantly it's chaos res and i crafted on some chaos res you probably get a better defensive belt if you get a belt with a crusader or something so it has percent es2 but i would imagine it would be very very expensive like in a multiple exalt range and lastly we have a pair of boots and this is just a plus two aura void walkers and nothing's changed about it kind of sucks we can't get an enchant but in order to get an enchant you have to start running void walkers through the lab and then enchanting it and then you would have to corrupt it and hope to get what you want and that sounds like a very tedious process and the flasks are still the same. I actually got 26 quality out of Zeri's Promise. I don't know if I did a betrayal for it, but basically you can see most of the gear is the same. The cluster jewels, on the other hand, are slightly different. Like last night after stream ended, I picked up three of these 35% effect cluster jewels. So I have two of these with 35% effect of ES. And this one also has ES on it. So each one of these nodes is giving us 12 ES. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's giving us 60 ES total, this cluster jewel. And this one's giving us 6 times 30. So that's pretty much having like an item worth of ES. So that's why 35% effect is pretty good. Because we are using, it's still giving us 20% total. And in best case scenario, these 4 slot ones gives us 3 plus 12, 15%. And even if you get the 2 extra travel points, like right here, it only gives us 21% versus like 20 percent now we lo do lose out on smite duration because of not having first among equals but overall the trade-off is pretty good because this is probably one of the few ways to fix chaos res i'll probably reforge the suffix while keeping prefix on this one and this one i'll do the same and hopefully if we got chaos res on these we would probably be near capped chaos res but then we have this first among one that i bought so this one is actually the most amount of aura effectiveness you can get on a cluster jewel so this is in a six cluster, six point cluster jewel. The most is six plus one, two, three, four, four times four, 16. So it's 22%. And this is the most you could actually get with a 35%. Now this one here is three plus three plus three, nine plus 12 is 21. So this is actually 1% more. So I imagine eventually that people will all swap over the 35% effect sooner or later. And it's just a matter of time. Once people figure it out that it's just a better solution. The only way it wouldn't be better, and I think you still need some of these, is because we need the skill points in order to take a Glorious Vanity. And Glorious Vanity will be a topic I discuss in the next video because I think it's about time that people are rich enough and people are progressed far enough into their characters to take advantage of a Glorious Vanity setup. Because I should probably be using a Glorious Vanity and it would help a lot. Now I wanted to quickly go over my watcher side that I bought. So this was a big purchase I made for 20 exalts yesterday. So this watcher's eye has hatred crit, which is something that we pretty much need in order for the crit to feel good and not feel so RNG based. And then it has consecrated ground you create while affected by Zeldry cause enemies to take 8% increased damage. And this is pretty much like our, what's it called? Our bottle faith. So this mod is actually very good too. 10% increased damage and this is 10% 8% increased damage now one could argue that cold pen is better than this on bosses since we don't have as much pen anymore but regardless it's very nice that we got a secondary damage stat 
And lastly, we have immunity to freeze while affected by Period of Ice. Now, why is this mod important? Because we no longer have freeze immunity because we don't have an alpha tower anymore. And that's how we got our freeze immunity before. So there's not many ways to get freeze immunity. You could technically rely on the... What's it called? On the soul of the Brian King. You cannot be frozen if you've been frozen recently. But it actually is pretty bad because getting frozen is really bad overall and it could just kill you. But another way to get the frozen is to get cannot be frozen on a pair of boots, but that requires getting your rare boots and it will require you to have pierce somewhere. So that is not really like a super viable option either. So the best option is to get one of these watcher's eyes. So I included a live search for it. So here's the watcher's eye freeze. You technically don't need to get hatred crit. You also get wrath crit and immunity to freeze. Now this is all this is only important because we wanted to use a helmet. And the helmet's important since we can get ES rather than having no ES on the Alpha Cell. So that's just something to keep in mind and have a live search up. If you can find one of hatred crit and immunity to freeze, I would definitely pick it up. It got pretty expensive last league after people figured out that they actually need a freeze immunity in order to play their build without the Alpha Cell. So it's just something to keep in mind and have a live search going. Now a lot of people on stream ask me like how I've been making money. And this is my atlas currently. So I have two methods that I found out that I've been employing to make money. So first is Lyra Ardain. And this is the beast area along with Blight. So this area's importance is that you have more chance of getting more breaches. And this node is the big one. Breaches in area spot 10 additional rare monsters and open and close 50% faster. So this means that breach encounters are shorter during the map so you don't spend so much time with the map during the breach. And more importantly, this spawns the 10 additional rare monsters. And during a breach, the rare monsters are what actually drops the splinter. So say like you average around 20 splinters a map, you pretty much pay like 2 chaos. And like if you use stones like I do, like currently I have Uda Toll Stones. And you can see I have an uh, increased chance of being blogged to Una Toll. And I have another one, but uh, right now I'm not running it. But basically, you end up getting a lot of these scare, uh, breach stones. So I end up having, so this is how many breach stones I have from farming it. And each one of these breach stones is 85 chaos. So that means like each splinter we pick up in a map is worth one chaos. So some maps I literally pick up like, what's it called, like 25 Una Toll Splitter, so I'm making like 22 chaos alone just from the breach. So slowly over time that adds up and now this node is pretty important over here to blight ones because if you get blighted scarabs, which I've been trying to farm, you also get the blight encounter and let's see what does the blight scarab say. So the blight scarab says you get a boss and you get additional reward, you have additional reward chest, so this is pretty good. So basically, the whole point here is to do the blighted map, blighted encounters in this later Arthane region, and then hopefully you get a blight map. Now the blight map T16 is worth like 55 chaos, but be sure not to undersell it based on the trade because there's a lot of people price fixing the blight maps, trying to instantly snipe it out. Basically, that region revolves around that. Some people say you can go down here to get the smuggler's cash and get the blueprints, and I think the blueprints sell pretty well, especially if they're fully revealed. I haven't really tried out that strategy too much though. Now here we have the Haywork Hamlet region, which is where we just do the essences. Now this area is pretty good because it's very guaranteed money and it's super fast. Again, you pay two chaos for the essence on here. And then you can see my essence tab. So all these essences in bulk, the screamings, you could probably bulk sell them off for one chaos super easily. Like people like to buy stuff in bulk and they'll pay a premium. So this area is pretty guaranteed money. It's not uncommon in a map for you to get like 20 C in essences. And you can also use your remnants of corruptions to use it on the purple ones. There's an acronym called meds that helps you remember which ones to corrupt. And it's like, what's it called? Misery, envy, dread, and scorn. So every time you see one of these, you use it on here. And then you have a chance to get one of these essences of hysteria. That's worth like 27 chaos or something. And I don't know if this one is actually worth more. But basically, we just do that. But the big money-making method in here is actually the betrayal. So if we don't have any betrayal missions, and we're just trying to get more Syndicate safe house XP, 
to farm, we can get like 10% per map that we complete. So that means we can farm Katarina. And Katarina is important because it drops the Cinder Swallow urn, which is around like close to 2x. It's getting cheaper now. So this method might not be as profitable later on the longer it goes. There's more and more people farming Katarina. And then it also could drop like this cane or whatever. That's like triple unveiled. It's also getting cheaper, this item. So we will see what happens to this farming method. But overall, it's pretty good. Wow. But the big money maker is having a sling at level three and completing Katarina. And it gives you a free exalt, an a sling exalt, which I'll go over into next. And this a sling exalt is worth around like four to five exalts on a TFT Discord. And it's really not that hard. A thing to keep in mind is you want him to be level 3 and I found out that once someone is a leader, it makes it almost impossible for him to spawn again. So the only way that AC would come out here is that he would be connected to Camaria because he cannot actually come out unless he is joining another encounter. So he can't be the main guy. So I like spent a long time as like, why is this guy not spawning? And it's because when they're a leader, they cannot be the main person in the encounter and they must be attached to someone else. But that was actually pretty frustrating, so I might just complete the Katarina and retry the board. Although, it only needs a one map to get it to rank 3. So in order to get it to rank 3, we can also use Valdos, which will 100% chance to gain an additional rank. So this makes it go from 1 to 3. So you could potentially run maps in here. You could do T15 Canyon and then do T16 Atoll. And that should keep your map sustained good enough so you have two good maps that are super speedy to clear. Now, meanwhile, you're doing all this, you will probably also be doing your Cyrus. So you can take this nose Cyrus super fast to progress the Citadel. And then once you get the Cyrus, it shouldn't take that long, like 20, 30 maps or so. You can kill him with Awakener 9, an additional chance to gain support gem. I've actually gotten two Awakeners orb already, Awaken Brutality. I believe that A9 Awakener is much more better drop table, but I'm not completely sure. So basically, that's just the way I've been making my currency in the game. Just mapping, choosing the Atlas Passive Tree region, and going back and forth between it. And I'm pretty sure like there's not that many other ways to make unless you're super into crafting and flipping. But I just find it's the most enjoyable way since it just allows me to have the most playtime rather than just trading or sniping live searches the whole time. Now I mentioned how we might go into Aceling Exalt, so I'll briefly go over it real fast, but I'll probably save it for another video to go in depth about it. But because it's kind of getting a little long. But basically, say we have this. So this is PoEDB. It shows you all the mods in the game. And then you'll see this section called Veiled Mods. So these Veiled Mods are guaranteed. So you get to choose out of three of them, I think, when you do it. When you, so it adds you a, it adds a Veiled Mod. So that's what uh, Aceling does so a base link will pretty much add a veiled prefix to this because it's the only thing that's available that we can unveil with june and in that unveil they'll give you three options and you can see the weighting of the options right so here we hope for that we can get plus two to aoe gems and this is pretty much getting like plus two auras now you can see more importantly here is the boots the boots you can get 30 percent boost speed it cannot be chilled or increased boost speed have been hit recently. And you can see how high this weighting is for the boost speed. It's 4,500. And it's this is almost 1 in 2. So it's like a 40 to 50% chance to get 30% boost speed. This is honestly probably better to remove and add speeds. Because it also has another component to it. This will actually make getting our boots extremely easy. Once we can awaken orbit and have clean prefixes. So I'm kind of looking forward to crafting the boots. Uh, this is just a sneak peek of Aisley. I'll probably make another video in the next diary going over more of the potential stuff that we can do with crafting rares now that Aisling is in the game with its new Veil vale mod edition. It's actually a pretty cool crafting method that I think will dominate stuff in the future. It's just Awakened Orby and then like Aisling exalting it your way up. And we'll see how it goes. Now, as I said, I killed the fear and everything, so I just wanted to include a few quick stream highlight videos of my boss kills. This character is very strong. Oh, I also want to show Scribe Ultimatums and exactly how much a joke it is. I've been buying the Scribe Ultimatums for cheap and just doing the hard ones that are either protect the ritual or defeat ways of enemies, and those literally instantly complete. 
Yeah, that's pretty easy. I do. Yeah, that's actually a good change they added to the game. But like, stuff like that's cool and all, but it doesn't like add that much uh, actual longevity to the league. But it is nice for SSF. I know like, it's really annoying to get the lab trial sometimes. So, why is the form one so much easier than the actual Shaper Guardians? Dude, can I get some regen going on? Well, that was too easy. <laughs> With Leap Slam. <laughs> hey, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the video and learning about Hello. some crafting options and the trail and how I make money. I know it's very frustrating to start off and not know what to do and how overwhelming it can be but the methods i suggested take like very little setup time and no initial investment just have to finish the atlas just have to keep mapping just keep doing the bosses and you'll eventually be able to farm a currency for the gear but anyhow everyone thanks for watching and if you like this video be sure to like and subscribe down below and be sure to check out my twitch stream i stream every single day and I'll go over your builds or pobs or whatever if possible. And I'll also probably start doing some boss killing. But I have to take a fee since GGG does not allow boss kills for free. So be sure to drop by the stream and hang out. I'm sure a lot of people could help each other out with the build advice. And if you need any help on the build. But yeah, see you next time. And have a good day. And hope you find lots of exalts in your journey. And see you later.